Hey there, wizard apprentices. One of the more popular things we used to do in Salesforce Classic were URL hacks. In this episode, we'll look how we can recreate URL hack functionality with an enlightening experience. URL hacks were great things. They allowed us to customize how Salesforce behaved to a certain degree. Examples of a URL hack behavior are creating an opportunity and a contact role at the same time with a click of a button, or automatically selecting the email template and the recipients also with a single click. The classic URL hack is opening a new record page and then pre-filling the values. Here's an example of a URL hack to simply create a record. We start with a standard URL, which looks like this. Then we find the name of the field on the page layout, and this requires us to view the page source. You're basically trolling through the HTML code. Once you find the field, example, the employees field on the account page, you can add that name plus the value as the parameter. When a user clicks on the link or a button and is directed to that URL, the employee field is automatically filled in. Magical, right? The problem with URL hacks are they're not supported by Salesforce. As a matter of fact, they don't work at all in Lightning Experience, with the exception of dynamically passing report filters, and that URL hack doesn't work for mobile users. In this episode, we're going to take a look at how we can replicate the URL hack functionality to create new records with 100% Lightning supported features. We have two options available. One, we could create an action to create our records. The downside is the action uses a different page layout. It's also not available on all objects. If we want to fully replicate the classic URL hack, we would have to duplicate the page layout in the action. Not only is this tedious, but it can cause performance issues with big pages. We can only replicate the locations of the fields because you cannot add sections to the action layout. So while actions are a quick and easy way to create these types of functionalities, it's not always ideal if you're trying to truly replicate the URL hack. Now the second option is what we're gonna look at right now. First, I'm gonna go through the scenario and then we'll see what the solution does. And finally, I'll show you the pieces to make this successful. Here's our scenario. We have tasks that are associated to a contact and to an account. We want to be able to create a case from the task page. We also want to pre-fill values from the contact and the account. Now we can't use an action since create records isn't an option for tasks. The other issue that we have is that tasks and events are special objects. So you can't really easily get to the related fields from the who ID, the contact or lead, and the what ID, the related to field. So let's take a look. You can see I have a task here, and it's associated with Jenny Song and her account Two Tone Incorporated. And it looks like Jenny is having some issues with getting too many phone calls. I'm gonna go ahead and create a support case. So I click my create case button. Here's my brand new case, and we can see I'm filling in the contact, the account, the subject, phone, case region is type. Now, beyond this, it's a standard case page, so I can go ahead and fill in anything else that I want. And save, and then I'm automatically directed to the case that I just created. Now that's a pretty nice and easy user experience. Let's take a look at the pieces we need to accomplish this. The first thing, of course, is we need the action on the task. Here's the action. You can see we're going to be using the action to call flow. And I just want to point out again that since this is a task, we don't have the nice create record from the uh, action type dropdown. Next is the flow. And the flow is really uh, a simple flow. It's going to take and look up the task record. It's going to identify what the what ID is, and then do some lookups against the account and the contact. And then finally, it's going to create the case. And you're going to wonder, what is the C create case? And this is where the magic happens. This is a local action, which is essentially a lightning component in the flow. Okay, so don't panic. I know a lot of people, Lightning Components is kind of overwhelming, especially if you're not a developer. In this particular scenario, the component is really simple and it requires no Apex code. It is made up of three items. First is 
the component itself. You can see here I have a series of attributes which line up with the fields that I am passing into the component to pre-fill the case. We repeat these attributes in the design. Very straightforward, very simple. And then finally we have the controller. The controller here is where we are going to go grab the inputs that are coming into the lightning component. We're going to specify what we want to do. In this case, we're going to create the record. And then we simply say, well, what type of record we're going to create in the case. And we set the default values for the fields. The last thing is we fire the create record. And that's all this lightning component is. If you want to see, or even better yet, copy and paste what you see here, uh, check out the blog post, which will be down below in the description, and it has a copy of this code that you can grab. All right, so now that we talked about the Lightning component, let's go and talk a little bit more in detail what I'm doing in the flow. This will be useful for people who have not used flow as actions before. One of the key things to do is when you are using flow as an action, you can't pass in additional parameters. The only thing you can get is the ID of the record that is calling the action. And it's already going to be defined as a very specific variable, which is record ID with everything in lowercase except for the I. So here we're going to grab our task. We're going to take a look at the task with the ID of the record ID. So we're getting the task the action was calling on. We save it into the variable and then we grab our fields. Now the, th the fields that are useful here is the what ID, which is the related to, the who ID, which is the contact or potentially the lead, and then the subject line. This is the important part. When working with events and tasks, you need to do a check and that check is for the what ID and technically the who ID. The what ID is more common. The what ID is controlling what is the related record? So it could be a case, it could be an opportunity or an account. And with flow, this is really important because we can't have a dynamic, hey, look up this particular sub uh, S object based on something that came out of the uh, task. We need to be able to know, hey, this is the specific object we're looking for. So I have a decision element here. And all my decision element is doing is taking a look at the what ID and seeing what the first three characters are. For standard objects, this is gonna be really straightforward. 001 is always an account. Uh, if you look at other IDs, you can see that they're pretty much always gonna be the same uh, three characters for all the standard objects. The difficult ones are gonna be your custom objects because those will vary. And if you create the custom object in Sandbox and you deploy production, those three uh, characters could change between the deployment. This is important though, because if you are going through and say, hey, uh, go look up the account and the one ID is actually an opportunity, you'll get an error. What I do here is if someone inadvertently clicks that button on my task and it's not related to an account, I take them to a screen that says, hey, you know, this button isn't available for the record that it's related to, please pick a different record. Otherwise, we proceed, we grab information from the account we grab information from the contact. And we can do that by simply referencing the ID equal to the what ID. Again, that related to field. And getting the information from the contact the exact same way. The ID is equal to the who ID, or the contact slash lead. Let's take a look at the lightning component being used as a local action. When you use a lightning component as a local action, the attributes we saw are now available as inputs for the local action. So here you can see I'm defining the values that I want for the account ID, contact ID, and the other fields based on my variables in the flow or just simply hand typing them in. You can also define outputs, which also can be an attribute, but in my situation, I didn't need any outputs, so I have none here. That's it. It's a very simple flow. It's a very simple lightning component, and yet it gives you a lot of flexibility in being able to build the type of user experience that you may need. What's really cool about this is with lightning components, you can do a lot of other types of actions within lightning. And so if you use them as local actions, it can give you a lot of flexibility in what you want to do. And I'll probably explore other types of things that you could do with a local action besides simply creating a case. 
Thanks for watching Wizard Apprentices. I hope you find this useful and inspiring. And remember, the magic is out there. It's yours for the taking.